In the 1920s, every every image involved preparing a, gra a glass plate and bringing it out and loading the camera with it. You could have maybe six glass plates in your backpack at any given time, and you had to set up the shot very, very carefully and take it. As we fast forward a few decades, right now the friction is so low that you can buy a camera that is as good as a $10,000 camera was in the 90s for $190 at a, um, at a candy bar dispenser in an airport. Suddenly the, the, um, the friction or the, or the barrier to taking images decreases almost to zero. At that point, the barriers to sharing become more a matter of just um, knowing what to share. Fifteen years ago, Bill Gates and Rick Rash had set up Microsoft Research. We started doing work on computer vision, but at that time, it was like, wow, you needed a supercomputer to do computer vision research, right? And now, well, we've got supercomputers on our desks and in our, and in our pockets. Microsoft and Microsoft Research have this huge heritage of, of taking innovations from research and pulling them into the product. And Windows Live Wave 4 is just another example of that. There's a couple technologies coming out of Microsoft Research in Wave 4. One of them is something that we've incubated for a while called PhotoFuse. People look good in one or the other photo, but there isn't one perfect photo. And in PhotoFuse, what we're able to do is align all the photos together and then let users very easily identify who looks good in which photo. And then we create a composite of all those photos that, that is the perfect family photo. A big frustration consumers have today with photos is that you have so many of them. Software plays a really important role there in organizing all that information. The facial recognition uh, technology out of Microsoft Research that's in Photo Gallery is able to really easily identify who's in those photos and share that information without any, any uh, user interaction. It really has taken face tagging from this, oh no, I, you know, I have to go tag a bunch of photos into something that people really want to do and have fun doing. Even if you can afford expensive photo software, you may not really know how to use it properly. And the great thing about retouch is you don't have to. Uh, you just select a blemish and it's gone. It's like magic. Auto-adjust is a feature where you can select a photo and, and click auto-adjust. And what we do is we look at that photo for things that might, might be better about it. Uh, it could be that the photo was too dark and so we'll lighten it up. Uh, it could be that the photo was just a little crooked and so we'll try to straighten that for you. And the cool thing in Wave 4 is, uh, if you don't like some of those adjustments, uh, you can just go in and turn some of them off. It lets you do professional level edits without you even thinking about it. You just select the photo or group of photos and click auto adjust and suddenly they're better. Will this kind of innovation continue, uh, especially in Windows Live? Uh, absolutely. We, we start to see a new wave of, of uh, technologies. Broadly speaking, one could call these machine vision and computer vision. That, uh, that start to really look into the insides of images, look into the pixels and understand them better. One of the things that I'm passionate about in my job is, is making sure that a lot of those creative ideas are coupled together with the problems that we know we see people have in the marketplace today and injecting those technologies and capabilities into software that can reach the masses. Knowing that scale as you work is incredibly motivating and um, it also makes you, makes you think in a very grounded way about how real this is. By virtue of having these researchers side by side with us, helping to shepherd these technologies into the product, uh, it allows us to, to come up with even new ways of thinking about how photos and videos could be taken into the future.